Welcome to the third and final behind the scenes video of my new studio. In the first video, we talked about audio and treating this horrific concrete room so that it sounds nice and quiet. In the last video, we talked about the cameras, lenses, and lighting that we use to get the scene to look like this. And in this video, we're talking about data, how I transfer the video files, where I save them, and then how I actually access them. Let's get to it. Now, when it comes to absolute speed, the internal SSD drives on a computer, especially the new MacBook Pros, are probably as good as it's currently going to get. Now, the next step down from that, and probably the most common type of storage, is just an external SSD drive that you plug in with USB-C or Thunderbolt, and that would probably work for most people. But I need a little bit more storage. I need the ability to back up my files. I also need the ability to access that storage from multiple computers at the same time, and I wanna be able to access my files from over the internet as well, I'm gonna to have to use something different. My storage of choice is a NAS device or network attached storage. Basically these little boxes hold multiple drives and they are little computers or little servers and you can access them from multiple computers on a network or directly connected to another computer. For my studio, I'm using the Synology 1621 Plus, and this little box holds six drives, and it doesn't cost that much at $900, but keep in mind, it doesn't come with any of those drives. You're going to have to buy those separately. Now, obviously, we're going to take a pretty big hit in speed if we're comparing an SSD drive to a network attached drive. But to bring our speeds up, what we can do is connect with a 10 gigabit ethernet adapter. Now, some Synology devices come with 10 gigabit ethernet installed. You can figure all that out on their website. This one does not, but it has a PCI e-slot built in. You can easily remove the top and add a 10 gigabit card on your own. I got the card with two slots, which actually saved me a ton of money because I had also purchased a $1,000 10 gigabit ethernet switch that was going to connect all of my devices together. But when I was building this, I realized, you know, I don't think I need this switch anymore because the NAS device itself has four one gigabit ports that I can use to connect all of my slower peripherals, including my Wi-Fi and everything there. But now I've installed those two 10 gigabit wired ports and I can run one directly to my MacBook and one directly to my Windows PC. Now, of course, this fits standard hard drives, but you don't wanna just throw any hard drive into it. Remember that the average hard drive in a computer is only going to be spooling up maybe a few hours a day. Most of the time, the computer's sleeping, the hard drive's not going to be used at all. Keep in mind that if you're putting a drive into a NAS device, it might be spinning for its entire life nonstop without sleeping, and you're probably going to want a higher quality hard drive. In my NAS, I'm putting in 16 terabyte Seagate Iron Wolf drives. The Iron Wolf logo means that it's made for these NAS or server applications. Not only do these drives come with a much heftier warranty, they also have a lot of technology included inside of them that can help determine if there's about to be a problem before there is. And these drives can communicate with my Synology box to warn me if one of these drives is going to fail so that I can replace it before I actually lose any data. Now keep in mind that most computers come with one gigabit ethernet ports if they even come with an ethernet port at all. So to get those 10 gigabit speeds, you're going to have to add some sort of card to your desktop or in the case of my MacBook, I actually purchased a Thunderbolt to 10 gigabit per second ethernet adapter. This adapter is gigantic. It also gets really hot, but so far it's worked perfectly for me. Now, when you first connect the Synology to a computer, it basically boots up its own little operating system that you can control through a web browser and you can access it remotely as well. You don't actually have to be local to control it. But this software can basically do anything you can imagine. You can also install applications on it to make it do even more things. Now, admittedly, I am not a NAS power user. I use this thing for very specific reasons. First of all, I want my data spread across multiple drives. We've all had drives fail in the past and if they're a standard standalone drive and it fails, that data is gone. But if you have it in a RAID array and it fails, you're still good. I have had drives fail multiple times with my other Synology devices that I've used in the past. And every time it either warns me that it's about to fail or if it does fail, absolutely no problem at all. I have it backed up on those other drives. You simply swap out the hard drive, plug it in, it instantly rebuilds everything and it keeps working. There's no downtime at all. Now, quite possibly the most important reason why I go with the NAS over a standard external drive is that 
I want to have all of my data in one location and I want it to be accessible over multiple computers. As I said at the beginning of this video, I have two lines running to a desktop and a laptop so I can easily connect it that way. But I can also connect to this drive anywhere in my house wirelessly as well because it's attached to my network. And then the great thing about Synology is it's also accessible online. All you have to do is create a username and password, go to a website and boom, anywhere in the world you have access to all of your files. So as I mentioned, in the last video, I'm recording on two Sony A7S 3s Both of them have USB-C cables plugged in the side, which are running down my wall here to my desk. And at my desk, I have both of those cables and I can easily plug them into a dock that's either connected to my MacBook Pro or that's connected to my desktop. When I plug those cables in, my computer recognizes these cameras as little external hard drives and I can access the memory cards without ever having to pull the memory cards out of these cameras. Now I can simply copy these files and paste them on my Synology. Let's do a little speed test here. First of all, I have my laptop plugged into the one gigabit port on the Synology. And as you can see here, I'm getting right around 100 megabytes per second. That's what we would expect when we talk about one gigabit per second speeds. But if I switch over to the 10 gigabit per second ethernet port, you can see here we're getting around 800 megabytes per second, a massive increase. Now, in the past, when I've done video editing over a network drive with a one gigabit connection, I have been able to feel a slowdown. But when I upgrade to that 10 gigabit connection, it starts feeling very similar to working off of an internal SSD. Now, let's talk about what I have on my desk here. I've got two Thunderbolt docks. The CalDigit dock is plugged into my Windows desktop computer. It just brings all of the ports up to my desk. It makes plugging things in a little bit easier. And then I've got this other one, which is a SanDisk Pro Dock 4 plugged into my MacBook Pro. So if I wanna use my Windows PC, I can go into the menu on my monitor and choose HDMI and that will start working or I could use DisplayPort to use my MacBook. Now for my audio, I wanted multiple sources to be able to play at the exact same time. I have more things plugged in than just these two computers, but even if you just consider these two computers, I wanted to be able to have my Windows PC on one and my MacBook on the other, and I wanted to be able to play audio from both at the exact same time, in rare occasion, or at the very least, I just didn't wanna to have to be plugging and unplugging in audio cables every time I switch from one computer to the other. To do this, I'm using a really affordable mixing board, which just allows me to plug in a bunch of stuff, but have one audio output. Now to control both of these computers, I have the MX Master Key keyboard, and then I have the MX Master 3 mouse. This mouse and keyboard is by far my favorite mouse and keyboard of all time anyway, but it also has a great feature that can remember three different devices that you can connect to instantaneously. So I can just hit one button on the keyboard and both of them will start controlling my Windows PC and I can hit another button and boom, it starts controlling my MacBook. So I think that wraps up this video and pretty much this series. I've got a few more ideas that I wanna do for the studio in, in terms of turning this into a live streaming set and I wanna do something with my teleprompter here, but those are gonna be separate videos that I do sometime in the future. I think it's time for me to get back to normal content. I know you guys have been asking for months, what do I think of the MacBook Pro? I made some really popular MacBook Pro videos a few months ago when I bought the new one. I've been a Windows user for my entire life. And honestly, I have not used my Windows PC really at all since buying the MacBook Pro. So I'm gonna have that video come out. I rarely ask for this, but would you mind hitting the like button and the subscribe button and the bell notification button on this video? Our numbers have just been decimated on YouTube over the last year or two. And it, I think it all has to do with uh, when we did those coronavirus journal videos a year or two ago. I mean, we have almost a million subscribers and most of our videos are getting under 10,000 views. I'm hoping that the next video will be a big one. I'm gonna be talking about slowly making the switch over to Mac because I've really been enjoying the MacBook Pro. Um, but I wanna get our numbers back up to where they should be and I definitely wanna hit that million subscriber goal. So if you've enjoyed this content, I would really appreciate you clicking all the clicky buttons and head over to fstoppers.com slash store if you'd like to check out our full length photography and video tutorials. Maybe you're looking to go pro or you wanna take your photo and video to the next level, check it out. I'll see you in the next video.